Boom. That happened so fast that they didn't even start the clock. It's one nothing with no time off the clock. Oh, there's two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. What's one nothing? That's the important part. Kiefer's attack is off target. Azuma's attack is no, it's short. Kiefer on a counter attack. Kiefer attack in preparation off target. Three of the four actions have been attacked by Kiefer. She seems to, that seems to be her game plan. Attack o fair, says the referee, which means Kiefer initiated. There was one blade action. Azuma tried to take the blade as well. No argument from her. Kiefer, one of the best infighters in the world, best I've ever seen, but that time she got out hit by Azuma. Attack from the left, says the referee. Azuma asked for one of the two video challenges. Kiefer hits in the flank, under the arm. They come back rather quickly here, and let's see. Attack from the left. So the call stands, it's 4-1, and Azuma with a long way to go in this bout, only has one challenge left. No, says the referee from Kiefer. And the new attack from the right is good. Let's watch. Well, let's see what the referee says. Kiefer immediately asks for a review. That looks like an attack. Oh, the little hesitation there. Let's see. Kiefer certainly pumped a little bit as she went to the back target. wasn't It wasn't continuous. Okay, so he said reprise of attack. So there definitely were two actions. The referee said, but it's true. She, Kiefer definitely did two different things. You see, Azuma lost the blade there. It's very difficult to hit with that in your hand. Although I have to say, two months ago at the Tunis Sabre Grand Prix, there was an action where it was called a touch, and then they went to the replay and saw that the fencer had lost the blade in the middle of the action, and the blade still scored. So yes, it is possible to score without the blade in your hand. Although the touch won't count. Attack from the right off target. Beat attack from the right is parried by Kiefer, who makes the repost. Kiefer like a cat took the blade and made the attack. There's your coach.
Wow, Azuma was sort of just plodding forward without a plan and got caught napping with a straight attack in the middle by Kiefer. Attack off target by Kiefer. She's controlling the bat. It's 8 1. Quick on the feet. Okay, so we've we've seen that a few three times tonight where look at the nice attack to the flank under the arm. Uh, you see when a fencer is struggling and they want a little bit of a break, they switch their weapon. It, it could be because the weapon doesn't feel right. It's maybe because they feel they can't score with that weapon. They've lost confidence in their ability to hit. And maybe it's because they just want a little bit of a mental break or a timeout, um, which is exactly what's happening right now. Nothing to lose for Azuma. She's got a 30-second break to compose herself. She has a new weapon. And she's got to tur start turning it around pretty soon. Referee says attack from the right stops. Then Kiefer makes the attack. 10 to 1. Nice attack by Azuma. She's trying to try that a little bit. Try something. Push Kiefer, provoke her. Oh my, I'd like to see the replay on that one. Kiefer scores on a remise. Look at that, underhanded almost. Well, I said earlier that the winner of the semifinal between Kiefer and Volpe, the number one and number three seeds, is likely to win the gold tonight, and it appears we're on our way to just that, uh, as Kiefer is completely dominating this bout. Too quick on her feet is Kiefer. Azuma's quick on her feet too, but clearly Kiefer has a quicker step tonight. Amazing touch. Well, Azuma has made it to the break. So, as I said in the previous bout with Poti and Faconi, you really don't want to see one-sided bouts, ever, let alone in the finals of a Grand Prix. But it happens. And when it happens, although you don't feel happy for the fencer who's getting steamrolled, you have to salute the fencer who is doing the steamrolling. And Lee Kiefer, the defending Olympic champion, uh, is two touches away from a dominant victory, uh, gold medal victory here in Busan. Let's see if Azuma can score a couple touches. And we're ready to start the second P1 
period. Kiefer, behind the head. All right, Azuma provoked Kiefer to attack into her preparation. She was waiting for the parry and made a beautiful riposte. Beautiful attack by Kiefer. She's one away from the gold. Not yet. Attack from the right off target. And there's your winner of the gold medal here in Busan at the Grand Prix. Your defending Olympic champion and current Grand Prix winner here, Lee Kiefer of the United States, gets a big hug from her coach, Amgar Kazbek. And that's the first time I've seen her smile all day. She had a game face on from the minute she entered the venue, and she didn't smile until she won the gold in impressive fashion, 15 to 3. It was the final For a deserving champion, Lee Kiefer. Here comes the winning touch. Boom! Congratulations, Lee Kiefer, on a great performance. And congratulations, Azuma Sarah, on a great bronze medal. Congratulations to both fencers. And stay tuned, because the men's gold medal match bout is next.